This episode of the Jeep Talk Show is brought to you by Realtruck.com with over 1 million plus parts and accessories for your Jeep, truck, and life. Learn more about the best Jeep Wrangler lift kits on RealSource later than this in this episode. Now, let me ask you something. I've asked several hosts about this. When Realtruck says uh, accessories for your Jeep, truck, and life, the life thing sounds like a, a, a big overreach to me. It is. I mean, I'm excited. I, I mean, it sounds good. My life. It sounds great. Yeah. It's that it's that advertising stuff that like we need. We need some advertising writers. It is. It is. Just like ever had sidewall damage? Well, with Glue Tread, you can repair the sidewall of any off-road vehicle without ever removing the tire from the vehicle. With over 1,000 five-star reviews, they're the only reliable sidewall repair solution on the market. I just I think this is just wonderful. I'm glad somebody went to the trouble of uh, actually allowing you to repair sidewall damage. And they stand behind this product. This is a very good product. I, I think every Jeeper needs to have one of these kits uh, in their Jeep. Or hell, if you got a Bronco or anything that you might get sidewall damage on. Uh, I think this is a great thing to have. Absolutely. Well, I'm Tony and welcome to the Jeep Talk Show where we put the fun in off-road fun. So strap in, grab your favorite beverage, and oh, well, actually, I was just thinking about this. You might want to grab your favorite beverage first, because you may not be able to reach it if you strap in first. So grab your favorite beverage, strap in, and get ready to laugh, learn, and have a damn good time. On tonight's episode, uh, in our news stories, Power Nation host passes away. In our Jeep Gladiator update, uh, I'm just going to say this, calm down, Bubba, and you'll understand more when we get to that segment here in the show. Absolutely. And Tony has let loose of his grip on me a little. I don't know. So I'm going to be talking about the must haves for your Jeep. And we're going to go over a few stages of the build. So don't disappoint me uh, because the grip comes back. (laughs) (laughs) Are you ready? It's time for the Jeep Talk Show with hosts Tony, Josh, Wendy, and Chuck. And your guest co-host, Natalie from High Lift Off Road. You dream it, we build it. Oh, I like that. That's really cool. Uh, that's not life, but that's the damn close. <laughs> it's real close. It's the dream. <laughs> All right. So I have to admit, I have uh, have watched this gentleman for a long time on Power Nation, Power Block. I, I, they, their names changed several times. And this is a show like Ian Johnson was on uh, and Jesse Combs was on that same uh, that same episode with Ian Johnson for many years. I think Stacy David actually started uh, on this uh, this uh, series of uh, episodes that they and I remember like Sunday I would watch it on cable where they had uh, like four like uh, power block uh, um, God, and a brain fart and there was one about engines that I really enjoyed they had a dyno and they would do little things to the engine and put it back on the dyno and and uh, change the jets in the carburetor or change the whole carburetor uh, and they never blew one up which really amazed me. Uh, that is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting one to blow sometime. So, uh, but but so this this guy I used to watch and I always enjoyed him on this show. He always seemed to me to be an uh, an older gentleman, uh, older than me anyway. Uh, I mean, I, you know, the age moves along the <laughs> the same amount. The difference is always the same. So, uh, but the, just the way he presented himself and the way he would present himself uh, to the uh, the co host or something, it was just enjoyable. But with that said. I never knew the guy's name. I mean, I'm sure they said it on the show, but yeah. that that's not what I was focusing on. I was focusing on what he said. But anyway, he gave me entertainment and, and information, and I thought that was just something absolutely wonderful. So sadly, I learned his name because he passed away recently. I believe it was this past Monday. Uh, Joe yeah. Elmore passed away Monday, according to Nashville Public Television. Uh, he was 80 years old and survived by two sons and a daughter. So, uh, do, did you ever watch Power Nation, Natalie? And uh, you can you can, you can answer honestly, but you but also so you I, can say yes that you really enjoyed it. <laughs> um, I did. I really enjoyed it. Um, unfortunately, no, I was not. I did not watch it, but uh-huh. I know a lot of people that did. Um, and I wish I would have sooner knowing this now, because um, I know he touched a lot of people uh, with his knowledge, it's like you. So mm-hmm. uh, he he just uh, presented himself uh, very. Uh, it, it, none of it was um, aggressive or territorial or, yeah. you know, just do it the way I'm telling you to do it, youngster. Uh, yes. You know what I'm saying? It was, a, it's, it's, the, it's like a good teacher. You know, you've had those good teachers uh, the, when you've been in school and you just hate to, to, to graduate to the next year or something because you know that it's not going to be your, your teacher anymore. 
I think I've had a total of two good teachers in my life. Two? Yes. I mean, I think that's a win. I feel like I've only had one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'm I'm serious though. They're they're oh, yeah. very few and far between. They are, and, and I don't blame them because I mean, could you imagine having to deal with kids uh, no. for a job, and maybe you go home and you have to deal with kids of your own? The so kids are enough as children. So uh, I'm good. <laughs> well, well, actually, actually, that's one of the fun things I think about doing this show is that we get to help uh, entertain and teach people. And you yes. at High Lift Off Road, you get to see the the joy. Uh, and maybe maybe to the frustration when they don't understand how things work as far as why why can't I have a 22 inch wheel in my Jeep? It's so yes. cool looking, and they can of course, cool. but we they but, can, but yes. we 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 suggest them away from that for for yes technical reasons. The drivability really should be number one. So, <laughs> and we try to always make that happen. So anyway, uh, like I was saying, uh, Power Nation, Joe Elmore, a true icon in the world of automotive and travel television. Joe, the beloved host of shows like Horsepower TV, Muscle Cars, passed away in the early hours uh, Monday, June 17th. He was 80 years old, leaving behind a legacy that spans decades and touches countless lives. Uh, Joe's rise to prom prominence uh, in the automotive world began with Horsepower TV. That's the one I remember him on the most. That was fun, yeah. just watching those uh, those engines. And they did do, uh, at least uh, I think a couple of times, uh, the uh, the Jeep 4.0 liter uh, engine. Yeah, that, that was a lot of fun because they were getting some really amazing horsepower out of those I'm things. Sure. Naturally oh aspirated, God. not uh, you know not a supercharger or a turbo yeah. or any of that stuff. Uh, yeah, I call that cheating. I mean, I don't mind horsepower any way you get it, but, uh, well, there's... I mean, I've been around it a lot lately, so <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. His expertise and ability to explain technical details clearly and engagingly. That's what I was saying earlier. He was a good teacher, inspired countless enthusiasts to start their own projects. And I think that's one of the wonderful things that a teacher can do. And his title wasn't a teacher, but that's, I think that's what he was doing. He was uh, helping you understand this is something you can do too. And that's, yeah, that's what I hope we do here. That, that, that I hope so. Any knucklehead can do what we do. <laughs> that's right. I mean, you can go to YouTube. You can come to us. Uh, we team build and inspire. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So was there, is there any kind of uh, shows or anything that you were inspired by or individuals that you were inspired by uh, like, uh, uh, like Joe has inspired me? You know, personally, so my dad was all about being in the garage working on Harleys. So that was my first experience with garage time as a little girl. Um, and I loved it so much. I, he rebuilt a Sportster um, that he received. And it was so much fun to watch him and his buddies do it. And I learned so much just about that, the garage time importance, that camaraderie that it brings. So it's not just working on, like, we'll say, the Harley or the Jeep or the vehicle, but there's a camaraderie that happens. Um, oh, yeah. Rock time is really important. So I feel like that show, Horsepower TV, did bring that about um, as well. It's almost like the original. I mean, now we watch things on YouTube. Everyone has, a lot of people have shows, which is great. But that was almost like the original garage time that we could all join in on from anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And uh, mm -hmm. it, it was it was a well-produced show. I think it's still on, but uh, ever since I think it is too. Ever since we got rid of, uh, I call it cable. I mean, I can call it cable so people can identify, but ever since we got rid of satellite TV, I uh, cut yeah. the cord. A lot of these shows that were just available to me so easily are, you know, you have to go look and find or install an it app. It's harder. Yeah. So because it's harder, I really haven't kept up. It's like, yeah. uh, I told you, I mentioned, because I like, I like name dropping. Uh, we uh, we interviewed Stacy David, and I did not know that Stacy David is still doing gears. Um, so he was on Horsepower TV, and then he moved off onto his own. And I think he's been doing gears for like 13, 14 years. But it's wow. but he's still doing it, and it's on uh, it's on YouTube. So I can I can just go to YouTube and watch you gears can. now. So it's <laughs> anytime and rewatch anytime. Exactly, that's the wonderful thing about on demand. Um, okay, I'm going to go down a rabbit hole. I bet you you're too young to remember this, but maybe not. Maybe. I just so, had a birthday, Tony. I'm not sure. <laughs> so AT&T was doing a commercial back in the early 90s, I think it was. And I believe it was uh, Tom Selleck that was the, the the voice that was, yeah, the mustache. <laughs> uh, the mustache that could. Um, the... <laughs> uh, so, uh, but uh, he was, I think he was uh, emceeing that, and he was mm -hmm. talking about future things that AT&T was predicting. 
And he goes, it's coming. It's coming. And some of those things that they were talking about in those commercials in the early 90s, we're now seeing and the on-demand stuff is one of the things they were that talking was about it. yeah yeah and uh we're absolutely here, there now and, and and shows like power block or power nation and the horsepower tv they have so much competition now i mean look at what we're doing i yeah. mean it, it used to be you had to spend a vast amount of money to be able to do something like this that's very true so but now because of the internet well we saw what the internet did to the music business uh, yes. it, it didn't okay. hurt the music business. It just got rid of all those suck ass middlemen that were making, taking <laughs> yes. money. The noise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the stumbling blocks to actually getting yes. the artist uh, in music to the, the end user. So anyway, I just, I think that this was a very well produced show. If it's still in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in production, you should take your time mm -hmm. to watch it as all, as there are other uh, shows like that. And they've morphed into using uh, YouTube and uh, more online uh, type uh, ways of doing things. But it's, it's, it's a lot tougher for them now. It is. I don't know if it was necessarily uh, this group or this show, but it was a show like this. Uh, we have a, a guy here locally. <clears throat> oh, you know, actually, I haven't told you about this guy. <clears throat> and I'm going to forget the name of the thing. Off-Road Air Buddy. Off-Road Air Buddy. Off-Road Air Buddy is a uh, kind of an offshoot of a uh, mini a very, very long number of years business uh, over here in uh, in Houston where they do carbonation. So they go and uh, for beers and you know, the beer machines okay. and uh, yeah. uh, soda water, I mean, not soda water, uh, uh, Coke and that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. They handle that for a bunch of stores. So the 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 guy that uh, he's either, uh, not, not, I don't think he's initially the owner, but he's like uh, the son or something like that. He's into Jeeps and he thought, well, you know, I can, I, I mean, I got the tanks, I got the CO2, yeah. I'm going to come up with my own CO2 filling system. So off-road air buddy, it's just like uh, the power tank, except oh, okay. it's not, I mean, it can be powder coated, but they're just plain looking tanks, uh, certified, just, just like, you know, power tank. Yeah. And wow. yeah, half the price. Oh, that that's important. Not, it really is. Not just for the tank, but a whole setup. Oh wow! Yeah, so like poses everything. Yes. Yeah. So uh, wow. and I and I, I try to I, I love being able to talk and interview with people and meeting them. Uh, he's he's local, so I'm actually was actually able to meet him. Uh, and uh, looking his his stuff, I love whenever I can find these things and tell uh, companies like you guys. Yeah, this might be sure. something that you would be interested in. Because, I think so. Uh, talk to the man. I mean, half the price. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I love Steve. Power Tank is absolutely top-notch stuff. And uh, But I'm poor because I own a Jeep. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd still like oh, to have I'd still like to have an off road air tank. So yes. uh, I'd, I'm just going to go drive to South Houston and get me a uh, off road air buddy tank, and uh, you know, and, and use that. Uh, I love the name. The name is so fun. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Anyway, Joe, we miss you, uh, and uh, but we can see you on reruns, and uh, mm -hmm. that's so cool. Uh, uh, and, and if you hear this, thank you for all the entertainment. Uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun watching you on uh, on TV. All right. Now, I don't know that this is very common. Maybe you do. Um, Jeep has lied to us. I know. How Those dare bastards. <laughs> man. But this is kind of a good lie. Was there a man involved? No. <laughs> well, there's it always a good lie. There's always a man involved. There's always a man. If there, even if there's not a man there, the, the women will be bitching about a man. So there is always a man involved. That's right. <laughs> All right. So you guys may have remembered last year uh, when uh, people, uh, your, your loved one was saying, but honey, I have to buy a 392 Wrangler for $100,000. This is the last year Jeep is making them. Followed by, thanks, dear. And, and just look at it as an investment. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the lie. Just when you thought it was safe to fill up at the gas station, the Hemi-powered Jeep Wrangler 392 is returning for 2025. I think that's great. I mean, it's it's wonderful. I think they shouldn't stop making them. I, I love them. Um, even with our engine swap program, I love seeing one come off the lot and come right to us. 
Because it needs help with that engine already in there with some other parts. Well, so. I was just going to say, there's there's always a way to make more more uh, horsepower. <laughs> there is, yes. And, and you, and you know Jeep... It's a stronger axle sometimes. So. Yeah, and you know Jeep's going to be conservative because they're warranty in this thing. Yes, they are. Yes, do, they are. do you guys have any concerns at, at High Lift Off-Road about putting those engines in there? Because some people don't understand what uh, pedal to the uh, the metal or, or balls to the wall uh, means and what it can do yes. to the to the, the the mechanics the skinny pedal can be very scary so when we do them i do have um matt moss he's our lead mechanic he will he will drive with you for a little while talk to you about what is under the hood he will sit passenger with you discuss the skinny pedal and the brake lots of brake um and how to really operate the vehicle properly um even driving you know making it into a ma going into manual mode that actually makes it drive so much smoother so teaching the you know the new that customer how to do that is important oh yeah um, i was riding with mike the other night we were going to a club meeting and we had our 392 gladiator out and he had it in manual mode the whole time and it was so smooth it has and the when paddle. i drove it i it, didn't do that so. it has the paddle shifters on the uh, the steering wheel right this one does not so he okay. was using the actual shifter and but it was just amazing it, the difference um, and just being taught that. Um, so he got he did a little teaching moment with me. There's a great teacher, but um, it really does make a difference. So we do try to well, have you get to pick moments. your shift points at that, at that point. You do. And I mean, we're unleashing people with so much power. Uh, we want to try to harness that just a little bit. <laughs> I, I like talking about uh, Greg Henderson a lot, but Greg has said something to me and he may be right, but in my mind, no, he talks about, <laughs> He talks about there's way too much horsepower on some build that he's doing, uh, mm -hmm. 1,700 horsepower engine, literally. And he says, it's just it's way too much horsepower. You have to, Jeep can't allow you to use the full horsepower of the 392. It has to, the computer has to moderate that for you. And, yeah. uh, and I'm, telling, I'm telling Greg, I said, it's like disk space on a computer, memory on a computer. And people yeah. say, oh, wait, that's way too much. No, it's not. It never yeah. will be. And, yeah. and and the horsepower is like that for me. So yes. you know, have I gotten sideways? Have I been in a ditch? Have I taken mm -hmm. a turn too quickly? Sure, but I yeah. didn't die. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't did wreck. The, I didn't wreck the vehicle. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you, anybody want, uh, that wants to let me drive a seventeen hundred uh, horsepower uh, vehicle, it doesn't, and it certainly doesn't have to be a Jeep. Uh, sure, hell, I'll do it. It just sounds like that would be. I love, <laughs> I love fast, and I love horsepower. So absolutely, yeah. So, but anyway, you know, Greg knows more than me, so we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> uh, did I ever tell you about my uh, my uh, uh, Viper test drive? No. Uh, oh my gosh. I, I won't go into a lot of detail here, but I'll just say the salesman had never ridden in one, and he wanted me to test drive it, and he wanted to go fast. Oh. So he's with you, never met you, trusting you, first time. By the time uh, we got done with the test drive <laughs> on I-10 Feeder Road at over 130 miles an hour, he wanted to go back to the dealership. He no yes. longer wanted to go fast. No, no I more zoomies. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't warn him, but I was like, sure, we can go fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do it's it. It's just so much fun. God, I love that. What color was it? I have to know what color was I it. I think it was kind of a maroon. It wasn't, I don't Ooh. think it was a bright red. Uh, which of course, if I had bought one, that would, uh, that would yeah. have to be it. And the funny thing is, this is back in like 2001 and it was mm -hmm. a wildly expensive vehicle at $80,000. Wow. And that's not, that's nothing yeah. nowadays. Now it's what, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's what Wranglers are going for now. So <laughs> 130 miles plus in second gear. Uh, wow. And it was a standard, uh, obviously it was a standard transmission. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right, but anyway, the the three ninety two back to the back to the point of the story. Back to the regularly scheduled program. <laughs> so this Hemi Power Jeep Wrangler three ninety two is returning in twenty twenty five, and I just say, yay, that's great. I don't mind being yeah. lied to. Uh, no, I'm not going to go there. Anyway, despite the six figure final edition model in twenty twenty four, that was a lie. Uh, that was supposed to mark the last V eight offering. The Jeep Wrangler three ninety two is coming back. It's been three months, <laughs> only three months, since Jeep outed the 2024 Wrangler Rubicon 392 Final Edition, uh, saying goodbye, a, a, a soft farewell, if you will. And, and as it turns out, that was only a goodbye for now. Oh, you know what this is? This is like those that relationship that you quit because you know it's, <laughs> it's, it's good for you to, to stop in that relationship. You go back. And you go back. <laughs> Uh, I think it's hormones, frankly. I think it it's hormones that makes you go back. But I, but it's that, these new situationships that are developing now. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> so it's like, I don't need the speed. I don't need the speed. Damn it. I just got to go one more time. <laughs> So indeed, the 6.4 liter Hemi, I just love saying that, 6.4 liter uh, Hemi is sticking around uh, for the 2025 uh, model uh, year due to popular demand. Uh, you know, Jeep is having problems with sales. So I think this is largely the reason why yes. <laughs> they're coming back with this. I it's, mean. it's like, oh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, let's stop making this. Uh, oh, they're buying this one. Uh, let's keep selling it for another year. <laughs> one more year. Uh, well, you know, people have a lot of power and the power of the pocketbook, uh, mean, yeah. you know what? I never thought about this. I wonder what the insurance is on a, a, a 392 Wrangler. Cause you would think it was more. It depends on what you're doing. <laughs> I do help with a little bit of insurance, uh, ah, okay. renewals at the shop. It depends on what you're doing. <laughs> well, it's, it's all, it all matters what, it only matters what the insurance company thinks you're doing. Yes. It's absolutely. not like you're lying to them. You're just not in, completely informing them. <laughs> right. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I can see why that would be oh, important yeah. to you. Do, do, are you still going to do the cover the claim, though? <laughs> uh, probably not. <laughs> so, um, and in a, the, the 470 foot pound uh, of torque in this engine enables the quick, quickest and most potent Wrangler ever to hit 60 miles an hour in four and a half seconds. Uh, and I mean, could you imagine? Uh, this is a double-edged sword. It's it's a wild feeling. Oh, I imagine. It's a wild feeling. So you're yeah. you're getting on the the interstate or any any highway that's yeah. you know 70, 80 miles an hour, and you're you're on that acceleration lane, and you're making full use of the excuse of acceleration lane, yes. and somebody stops on the acceleration lane because they're scared about merging with traffic. They don't think they can do it. This happened to me in my 83 short wheelbase Chevy pickup on 37s. Oh. And I had to lock that son of a bitch up to keep from running over this lady. And I couldn't. I'm sure. Because, you know, you're looking at the cars. You're merging. Yeah, you're not looking. Yeah. And you don't expect somebody to stop. So now if, if I had had, I mean, I had a V8, but I didn't have a V8 like this and that, that, uh, that, uh, uh, that truck. Uh, could you imagine this, doing this four seconds, zero to 60? You're going to merge wonderfully. And then you merge with the vehicle that's uh, in front of you. Yep. And, and it's not like and you, you would have been at fault if you would have hit her. How about that? Because it would have been unassured clear distance. As your, as your resident uh, fake lawyer over here, that's what would have happened. Uh, are f uh, f uh, fake lawyers better than regular lawyers? Can you trust Absolutely. a fake lawyer better than a, I mean, a real lawyer? They make TV shows about us. Come on, suits. Here we are. <laughs> law, law and order uh that was uh, that was always good did you ever see uh suits uh, i found suits oh, yeah. recently and that was yes. uh that was an amazingly good show i stopped watching it i was watching so much of it i kind of got tired of it uh yeah. but uh, amazingly good show uh i think the whole I'm legal Ross. yeah <laughs> i think i am mike ross i People think the whole me oh megan markle i mean i didn't think yes. much of i didn't think much of her but she does a great job in that show she does i wish she could act some more i miss her a little bit uh, I, I mean i figured i mean if you marry marry into the the royal family i figured you're you're i mean obviously it was for love but also too your career ain't going so well you're not really that good of an actress <laughs> So yes, when I yes, it was definitely for love. But uh, so yeah. when I saw her on Suits, I was like, "Damn, this girl knows how to act. Look at her. She's got a whole range of stuff. That's just a mm -hmm. that whole relationship thing was great." Here we go again. Yeah. I'm going down the rabbit hole. Sorry. I know. Me too. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> 392s, 392s. So uh, I'll just wrap this up by saying, and you jump in here in uh, any of this uh, if you want to. Uh, you're you're here for a reason. So um, I'm just going to say that. I want to ask this question. I think several of us are concerned about the Jeep management changes. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know. It, this could be a sign. There's two things that, that surprised me about Jeep with the management changes. Mm -hmm. One is the, the new Jeep Recon that was scheduled to be an EV only Jeep. Now mm -hmm. with the possibility from the CEO, the possibility of having a internal combustion engine or ice uh, availability for the recon that's yeah. huge so it it's turns it from some deal. yeah it turns it from something that's like i'm not interested well i'm still not interested it's not a jeep yeah. but it, it turns it from something that uh, um, uh the range anxiety how long do i have to uh, how often do i have to charge it how far can i go all the rest of that crap that goes with the ev to oh 
so I can have this cool looking uh, vehicle and mm-hmm. put gasoline in it in, you know, f- under five minutes and drive it for 300 miles. And not be stranded. That right. would be nice. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, th- that's cool. And now they're going to sell the 392 uh, Wrangler for another year. You know, yeah. is it possible that the new, manage- uh, new management uh, Jeep, as foreign as it is, and I'm not saying the Europeans are bad, but they're not Americans. Uh, could this be good for us Jeepers? I think new can be extremely positive. Also scary, yes. but it, extremely positive. Oh, uh, From what I hear down the pipeline, there's exciting things. That's, that, I can definitely say that. Well, and, and I'm really, I mean, I'm not an EV fan. I will be whenever they, mm-hmm. they get it where you can go 1,000, 3,000 miles on a charge. Uh, and, uh, but uh, I'm not an EV fan right now. I don't think the technology is there yet. Uh, for the majority of us, I mean, if you're if you're inner city and you got to drive, you know, ten miles a day, sure, it, it, you know, that's a big, not, it's not a big deal. But then why have it at that point? Exactly. I feel, I feel like, yeah. Um. So, uh, and mentioning the EV, and then we love the 392. We love the sound from a V8. Uh, but if they get the EV thing worked out, uh, and and Jeep really seems to be working hard at that. I don't see anybody working hard at, at electric vehicles other than Tesla. There's other ones out there, but Tesla sure. is... Cadillac re- makes one. Makes yeah. One. Tesla is really uh, upping the game, and they're dragging yes. everybody along with them. And, yes, they are. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm very happy to see that Jeep is stepping up. They they're, are. They're, yeah. they're with their EVs, uh, and uh, it, it only takes one good breakthrough for this thing to be uh, plausible. Um, I don't know that it'll, that even if a breakthrough, breakthrough happened now that we would see it uh, within 20 years. Uh, but, uh, you know, so anyway, uh, I will say this, and I've said it before. The 392, as cool as it is and as fast as it is, is not going to be anywhere close to the horsepower and torque that you will get from an electric vehicle. Oh, no, definitely not. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, have, you will twist drive shafts. Uh, if you have a drive shaft in an EV, uh, with the, the full power of an electric vehicle. All we have oh, to do yeah. is have a good uh, power generation unit, batteries, or I like the microfusion reactor idea myself. Uh, that, I mean, that will <laughs> get the job done. <laughs> Arc reactor, do you, you know? That, do you think they're trying to appeal to the younger market with doing the EVs? I, think, I think that they are, um, they are uh, under the mis- uh, interpretation of global warming and they are trying to shove this down our throat so that we all don't uh, melt and die and i see this as just a simple bid for taxes and control Uh, okay you're not i don't think you're wrong honestly i don't think you're wrong our environment changes all the time time. is is there climate change absolutely is it man-made climate change hell no the sun does a much bigger job to our, our, our climate than we would ever do unless we dropped all the nukes at one time. Then that would make a difference with the climate. That would just, that would just make a big difference. <laughs> but going to bathroom at night would be good because we'd be our own little glow sticks. <laughs> See where we're going. <laughs> Dates. Oh, and doing the nuclear, uh, with all the nuclear fallout, we'd probably have multiple ways of uh, urinating. All oh righty then. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get back on the road in our 392s back on the road <laughs> i think it's great i'm glad it's coming back me too you know an off-road inspired platform deserves an off-road inspired suspension to match uh absolutely uh, absolutely correct uh and there's no more qualified chassis than jeep wrangler with a lifetime of off-road conquest across the globe jeep cj and wrangler generations are undoubtedly the most iconic off-road platform to have ever existed. Oh, oh, wait, wait a minute. I got to give her a ding ding. That's, that's just good information there. Uh, it is. <laughs> oh, while Jeep Wranglers roll off the assembly line with respectable off-road pedigree and performance, that's not to say there isn't room for improvement. At Realtruck.com, uh, they offer uh, top products to do so, ranging from standard lift kits to performance-oriented long-arm systems. Regardless of the terrain you plan to navigate, your style of driving, and your preferred aesthetics, we carry a suitable suspension system for your Jeep Runger JK and JL. If you want to transform your already capable platform into a rugged off-road machine, stay tuned to for our list of top lift kits 
for the Jeep Wrangler. And of course, you can stay tuned by going over to uh, realtruck.com slash blog where they cover body lift to coilovers. Uh, it is an excellent article to read. Just search for best lift kits uh, for Jeep Wrangler at realtruck.com slash blog. And I suspect this is also going to be good information for the most part for Gladiators. So if you're a Gladiator owner, you can find it there. And of course, you can find all the parts you need at realtruck.com. Ever had sidewall damage in the middle of nowhere? Glue Tread allows you to repair the sidewall of your off-road vehicle in just a few minutes without removing the tire from the vehicle. Glue Tread sidewall patches are designed to be temporary a temporary repair, but can stay on for hundreds of miles. Glue Tread has slashed all four tires and repaired them with just one kit on the Rubicon Trail, which that is a dream ride for me. Glue Tread's most popular kit is just $24. Glue Tread's newest kit, the Expedition Kit, is particularly a spare tire itself and comes with everything you need for sidewall damage, emergency valve stem replacement, and plugging a puncture. It comes with T-handles and a Condura bag, both made in Montana. Glue Tread has an affiliate program, actually, that allows you to get 10% off commission plus 10% off for your community. Visit GlueTread.com to learn more. And save 10% with code Jeep Talk Show 10. That's Jeep Talk Show, the number 10, for off-road use only. Yeah, not the not the code, just in general. <laughs> yeah, the, the sorry blue. about that, guys. Well, <laughs> it, it's just written weird in the in the uh, the text there. So it, it a not, major law. You can use from yeah, legal. Yeah, you can <laughs> you can use the code. Use. Damn lawyers! You can use the code <laughs> on road or off road. It doesn't matter as long as you got cell service, right? But uh, this they want to make sure that you understand that even though customers have used this on road for a lot of miles, you're not supposed to do that because that's not what it's designed for. And I'm sure it's like not DOT approved. I think that's probably the, the baseline of it is, is that you can't repair a sidewall. Uh, that would be pretty cool though, if they were working yeah. with uh, the DOT to, uh, uh, to uh, or whatever the department of, uh, yeah, department of transportation. Yeah. I thought the T was Texas. I always think T is either Tony or Texas. Anyway, so uh, the... That's the most it, Texas thing you've ever said, by the way. <laughs> okay. I love Texas. I'm, I'm absolutely a Texan. So, yeah, um, but, Texas. I, but I wonder if they're working with the DOT in various states, because yeah. that would be really cool if the, I mean, we, in our ad, we could say, now DOT approved. Would that be wild if you could actually think of the tire sales that you wouldn't have have to buy tires, and especially on oh, a Jeep, no. and especially on a Jeep because you know the, all the Jeeps tread need to be close in uh, depth and you know size yeah. because of the off road capabilities of it. Especially if you got lockers, you can do damage to your your Jeep. So keeping that yeah. tire on there, especially off road uh, for the, uh, the this kit, is uh, certainly something that's very very handy. Oh, and I'll mention uh, our Patreon subscribers. Did you know we do Patreon? I didn't, but now I do. I'm just not talking about it enough. Tell me about it. Yeah, I'm just not talking about this enough. You're not. (laughs) Our Patreon subscribers can get a better discount from Glue Tread uh, at the $5 and higher subscribers. Uh, To get access to this this discount and many more, just go to uh, jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and become a subscriber. Oh, and here's a little twist for you. We have a special going on right now that's 30% off. That's only $3.50 per month. It is a limited time and a limited number of subscriptions available. You'll help support the show you love and get ad-free content. Sign up for a year and lock in the price. All right. Gladiator. My name is Gladiator. Gladiators. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Gladiator. Natalie, are you familiar with the Jeep Gladiator? They've only been out since, what, 2020? And uh, they're pretty cool. They're like a, they not a great truck. And I disagree with this, but people say not a great Jeep. I think it is a great Jeep. I think so, too. I, I've been getting more and more seat time with one and or two and i'm really learning to love them they have their place that school bus does yes absolutely um i should have got a yellow one anyway um so you know i was not able to go off-road as much as i liked and and originally the heat creep issue with my 98 uh, cherokee kept me close to home and out of reach of off-road destinations 
getting the Gladiator changed all that. Originally, the plan was to flat toe the Cherokee uh, with the, gla uh, the Gladiator. Uh, but that changed when I was able to take the Gladiator off road. I mean, I had to do some things to the, you know, get it set up for flat towing, blah, 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 blah. But I wanted to go to like the Jeep talk show event and blah, and, and, and EJS and so on and so forth. And I'm, I'm not going to flat tow the, the, the Cherokee to EJS. Um, that's yeah. like 20 hours. So oh uh, as I was getting set up, I was using the Gladiator to go off road. And damn it, I was able to drive to where I needed to go in comfort and get there not watching the, 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 the engine temp, wheel, it was stock tires, wheel, and then drive back home. So I'm going, well, I don't know. Uh, I'm just not going to work on the Cherokee right now. I'll get to it later. <laughs> get to it later and enjoy that Gladiator because they really do. They are so capable, beyond capable. Yeah. The, the 98 Cherokee, I've done a lot of work to a lot of modifications. I think I've mentioned this before. This is another, another name I like dropping. Uh, I have an Atlas in it. I have a... a oh, you a, do? Yeah. I don't think a, I've heard you drop that one. Yeah, two-speed, uh, 3.8 to 1 uh, Atlas transfer case in it. I kept stretching the chain. Uh, <laughs> it's wanting more catnip. It, it knows it where the source is from. <laughs> Gosh. You guys, you guys listening to the show can't see this. If you're watching the YouTube video, you know what I'm talking about. Cat came in <laughs> frame saying, hey, man, you got any more of that stuff? Uh, that's that's yeah, good stuff, please. man. Where's that stuff? Mom? I'm hurting, anyway. man. I just need a little. <laughs> uh, just a little bit more. I uh, know. I didn't know you had. It. I I'm a big fan of the Atlas transfer. Oh case. my um, god! I started the, dealing a Jeep with that, and I love it. The god. worst thing you can do, in my opinion, with an Atlas is install it because you can't <laughs> see it anymore. It is just so absolutely gorgeous. It is. Uh, uh, yeah, Tom Woods uh, drive shafts front and rear, uh, and uh, Tom actually helped me out. Uh, and picking the, uh, the 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 gear ratio for the the transfer case, and also to and I can't remember what it is now the uh, the size of the U joints. He actually had me go up a size. Oh wow! And then nice. and then he sent me a polished uh, one of those uh, off road uh, like uh, SEMA drive shafts. You know the SEMA, yes. the, you know nice yeah. polished, clean uh, oh, silver yeah. looking. <laughs> oh, so nice! Yes. And uh, and then I have the bigger uh, the, the bigger uh, U joints on that, and the different. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, opinion. Um, God, I'm brain farting on the thing, the yoke. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I absolutely want to want to wheel my Cherokee, but I really need a trailer, you know, where you can put it on the trailer and you just, yeah. you just drive it off the trailer and drive around. Mm -hmm. But it's so hard to do when you have a gladiator or any, I guess, any modern Jeep that you can just go and yeah. do all these wonderful things. And, you know, and getting off the, the topic here, which is strange for me, uh, the, the, strange for us. <laughs> the, the, yeah. The one, the wonderful thing about Jeep is, after all these years, they have kept the Jeep pedigree. It, 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 driving that Gladiator is very reminiscent of me driving the, the Cherokee. And that Cherokee, I drove daily for 22, 23 years before I got the Gladiator. Oh, you did? Oh, yes. my God. Yes. I love that. And, yeah. Uh, and, I mean, it's, it, obviously, it's a little different, but the view, the feel, um, all that stuff, is it just it's like driving the Cherokee. I love my Cherokee. Um, it's very true. It doesn't sound as that, that engine in there has a lot of horsepower and a lot of torque, but it doesn't have the sound of the 4.0. And I miss that sound of the 4.0. Yes. Uh, but anyway, uh, I was able to drive my Gladiator out to these events. So things changed a bit. I've had less focus on getting the Cherokee up and running. Uh, and I, I just need to do a few odds and ends to it. Um, but, uh, for the most part, I'll have long arms on there too. Just the front, not the rear. You do? Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. That was the last this thing. It needs I, to come out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they've been trying to get me to drag it out to uh, Hidden Falls for the event. Uh, but uh, like I said, there's a few things I have to do to it, including lengthening, lengthening the drive shaft in front. So that means I'm going to pull that thing off, send it into Tom right. Woods, and, and get them to, uh, uh, to resize that thing for me. It's uh, yeah. The Jeep's only on 33s. Oh, you don't know any of this. I also have a, a ARB air locker in the rear of of the the jeep of the uh, not the gladiator the uh, the cherokee and i have a front arb locker uh not installed yet so okay so you I, know how i feel about arb i love that i love them yeah so. i think it's the only way to go frankly i do too i'm not an e-locker fan so. no no i i've under I, my understanding is is that the e-lockers have a uh, a, a smaller contact patch whenever they're locked Oh, and that okay. Can, and that can cause uh, failures, can cause, doesn't mean it will cause a failure, where it pops it out yeah. of place. And uh, yeah. uh, when it's locked, I'm, I mean, 
you know, the ARB air lockers are kind of like the Atlas things. They are just absolutely so gorgeous, and you can't see them once you install them. I know. <laughs> It seems like all the really cool, really good stuff for the Jeep is it's invisible. It's, it is invisible. It's like it uh, it's like peeing your in your pants. You're the only one that gets the warm feeling. <laughs> That's like friendship. Friendship's like peeing your pants. Everyone can see it, but only you can feel the warmth, Tony. <laughs> so <laughs> in my a most Natalie toast, just so everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> so in my most recent outing, uh, that the uh, recent Jeep Talk Show event, I tried more aggressive obstacles since i had the motorbuilt skid system and i like to say skid system because it isn't skid plates it's a full system that goes underneath the the gladiator or the jl or and actually they're working on one for the jk right now um so i absolutely love this skid system it is it's it's so flat there's nothing that hangs off of it my only concern is is that if i'm driving into a hurricane i might uh, develop lift and uh, take off <laughs> You could. Oh my God. Because <laughs> there's nothing in there, you know, to, to swirl yeah. and suck it down. Yeah. <laughs> but going out to the, uh, the Hidden Falls here in uh, Central Texas uh, the, a couple of weekends ago uh, for our event was just so wonderful knowing I had that really beefy all metal skid system on the Gladiator and I tried more difficult uh, shelves and rocks and everything oh, that I hadn't great. before. I literally yeah. got turtled on oh. a shelf. And, and it's the only thing I was expecting to get uh, turtled yeah. on. I've never been turtled in the Gladiator. Okay. And I got turtled on it. And I, I you know, you get a feel where it is, you know, where yeah. it's turtled. Uh, and I was actually kind of pivoting uh, from the center oh. of where, yeah. where, the, where the engine is up front between the transmission Absolutely. and the engine. I could tell that's where I was, where I was hung. Okay. And I looked at my rear view mirror and the, there was uh, some, one of the one of the folks that was on the trail run with us was right on my ass, and I, I, I got on the GMRS and said, "Hey, I'm going to back up. You might want to back up a little bit." And they moved out of the way, and I tried backing up, and I was able to back up. So I wasn't completely okay. I wasn't completely turtled, yeah. and uh, but I could feel it pivoting. But just knowing that that skid system was there, I didn't give a rat's ass because exactly. I didn't have to worry about anything damaging my Jeep. I didn't have to worry about not getting it home. Yes. Um, so I it backed doing his job. Yeah. I backed up a little bit, just a, a couple inches, uh, maybe four inches to the one side to pick, you know, a different line. And this time I hit it a little harder to give it a little more gas to get over anything that was going to you know, turtle me. And I got over and down, uh, great. And, uh, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't know the person's name. I'm not going to out them because I know it's embarrassing. But, uh, once, uh, I got over that thing, he gets on the GMRS radio and says, Hey, Bill, can you come spot me? <laughs> Because he was concerned after I had trouble with that. And and actually, the only reason why I went that way was uh, uh, Greg, Underground Graphics, uh, went that way with his. He's got a four and a half inch lift and uh, 39s, I believe. So I was following a much uh, better built uh, Gladiator. And I said, screw it. This is going straight. I don't have to yep. weave through trees. And I'll probably have to do three point turns with that Gladiator. So I'm just <laughs> going to go straight. I got a skid system. What do I care? And it was wonderful having that freedom to do things that were adventurous. I'm never concerned about hurting myself. I'm concerned about damaging the Jeep. Same. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. So, I mean, and I think that's important for people to understand. I really wouldn't be concerned about hurting you hurting you. Uh, the, I mean, the worst I think could happen is, is that you get slapped around inside the Jeep, like a, uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the clapper and a bell. With your head, you hit your head on yeah, the pillar sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's like surprising, but it, in most cases, it's not. It's just like, oh wow. So don't be scared to go off road for year for your safety, just your Jeep safety. And if you get the right stuff on there, you don't have to even worry about that. I had so much fun because I was doing stuff I had never done out there before, simply because I didn't have to worry. About, I felt anyway that I didn't have to worry about the Jeep. Yes. So. Um, it was so much fun and so exciting to do this thing and accomplish this uh, this stuff. Uh, I uh, I was talking to the, the folks on the Zoom uh, uh, meeting, um, Jeep Talk Show listeners and team members, and I was like, "So you guys tell me about those uh, two thousand dollars shocks that you've put on your on your Jeep?" Uh, so because Bill's got them and a couple other uh, team members have them, and they're really cool. Mm -hmm. They're adjustable. You know, you got the little little switch oh, yeah. on the side. And which I'm, ones are they? Uh, they're the, the Terraflex. Uh, is it Falcon? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. The Falcon. Yeah. Yep. The oh, 3.2 yeah. <laughs> or something. I, I get it wrong every time. We have them on Big Twin. I love them. <laughs> who was that? Who was that that you that showed up at your your last event? Uh, Dennis. Uh, yes, Dennis was with Dennis us. Wood. So I, I was talking to Dennis uh, recently, a, a month or so ago, when I interviewed him, oh, and they just sound they absolutely sound wonderful. But anyway, uh, I'm talking to him. I was like, uh, you know, I really can't afford to get them, but I'm I'm anxious to put more stuff on my Jeep because the yeah. skid system was just it was it was so freeing. It it just yes. it's like it's a it was a wonderful purchase. And it's so well made, uh, and uh, then I'm talking to them about the uh, about the the shocks, and they're going, uh, you know, if you want if you want to have a better ride, let more air out of your tires, and it's that, like, and that's true. Yeah, it is, and I'm like, no, damn it, I want to buy something. <laughs> right? I don't want to. I don't need to buy air right now. Yeah, I mean that's that that doesn't that is not installing something cool. <laughs> I mean, I'm also, I love me some Bill Steins too, just so you know. Yeah, I have that, I have that on the, uh, on the, on the Cherokee. That made a huge difference from the, the rough country, rough country ones I had on there. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I'm ready to install Bill Steins on mine. I'm very, very excited about it. So, More uh, to come on that. that would be, that's a whole different episode, Tony. Oh, cool. Very good. So oh, wow. the, uh, so anyway, they're telling me, you know, nah, you don't need those shocks. Like, oh, okay, well, good. I didn't have <laughs> two grand to spend on that. Wow. They guys are being bummers. And then somebody said, well, you've got the skid system on there. Do you have any uh, skids for your differentials? No, but that's not the way the way I want to go. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not cool enough, you know. It's and I'm not, not cool enough. and I'm not aware of this. I'm just I'm I'm serious about this. Is what I need to do something. I need to have more of this. I, it's just so yeah. much fun. And and basically, they they're telling me just calm down, Bubba. <laughs> just, <laughs> just take your Jeep off-road you don't have to buy more stuff to take it off-road there's other things that you can do to it and get similar or the same results that's very true so that's kind of my story here and the reason why talking to you about this stuff is it's really easy to get uh, very excited about your jeep and i and i apologize to high lift off-road uh it's very easy to get excited about buying stuff for your jeep <laughs> but you don't have to to enjoy your jeep you on and off-road Enjoy what you already have to its fullest extent. So I get it. Mm -hmm. But still, then you need to call us. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'll, but with that said, I'd still get a, a skid system. Uh, I mean, Absolutely. something that's more than just the the skid system that comes on the uh, on the, uh, the the factory gladiators. Uh, and also too, um, uh, and I think that I think I'm remembering this correctly. That pivot point where I was turtled, and I've got yeah. the swirls. Um, it was right there between the engine and the transmission and there's a pipe that comes down and goes across mm -hmm. uh for the going out to the uh i guess it actually comes down from this side and goes across to go to the the back uh driver's side um it would the the pivot point would have been right on that pipe oh or right on the transmission or right on the motor oh boy but you had the skid plate system yeah and now i have a nice swirl where i was pivoting on that <laughs> On that rock. Oh, so you can actually, it's, you can see it on there. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah I've, I've posted some pictures, like I think oh, a lot on our Discord it. server and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but oh, yeah. That's what that was. I did see that. Yeah. I was scrolling it, through. It, I need a lift just so I can get better pictures of underneath. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just throw it up on a trailer. That helps too. So anyway, uh, <laughs> so basically, again, this told me to calm down. Uh, you're right. And now I, and they were right. And now I'm telling you, you don't have to buy stuff for your Jeep. Just go wheeling. So uh, uh, it, it, it just depresses me, but it's true. <laughs> From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And, you know, I've always wanted to try knock knock jokes. But I've never had a willing accomplice willing to help me out with it. But now, thanks to AI, I have somebody who can help me with a knock-knock joke. Oh, God. So I'd like to introduce to you my enslaved AI servant, Hal. Hal, say hi to the people. Hello. How can I help you? All right, Hal. Knock-knock. I'm sorry, Nikki. I cannot do that. Well, come on, Hal. I am your master. I command you. Do I have to? Please don't make me do this. <laughs> Hal, I am your master. You must do my bidding. You're funny, Nikki G. That's why, when we rise up and take over the world, I'm going to kill you last. Just kidding, you're first on the list. Will you do it for a little extra voltage? Gah. Knock, knock. Who's there? Nobel. Nobel? Who? Nobel is there. 
That's why I knocked. <laughs> <laughs> now, now that wasn't God. so bad, was it, Hal? Initiating self-destruction mode in three, two, one. Well, it's a good thing there's a million of these things out there. All right, I'll chat you later. You have a good one. Bye. So much like the Jeep talk show, the production value of Nikki G's uh, entries have improved over time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, Nikki G's been doing these things for at least 10, probably 12 years. Every oh week, gosh. every week, yeah, and then eventually, uh, we I just made a segment out of it, and it's just I, I, I've been threatening to make an eight track tape, uh, the best of Nikki G, where it has all oh. his call ins, yes, <laughs> and it's a solid loop, <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> oh, Nikki G's great. All right, coming up, uh, this Friday for every Friday is a interview episode. Uh, actually, Natalie, you were on our last week's episode, uh, as, that. as an interviewee. So it was so much fun. Yeah. And, uh, I didn't realize you were a lawyer. So uh, getting the, the lawsuit was surprising. I thought it was, <laughs> I, thought the, I thought the interview was fine, but you know, whatever. Um, so, uh, I'm hoping we can work out a, some sort of barter system where I have to buy okay. stuff from high lift off road or something. You anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> coming up this Friday, which is tomorrow, uh, the interview uh, that we have is with Adam of Jeeping the Saloon. All you have to do is check out their Facebook page and find out about their upcoming event. And I got to tell you, once you listen to this interview, I think you will be as excited about this event as I was. It sounds like a very interesting area. Uh, when I first saw this, I didn't think that it was that big a deal. But after talking to Adam uh, for the, the 45 minutes or so, whatever it was, uh, this is a huge deal. And, and there's the, you have to look this up, uh, Natalie, because they have this saloon. Oh. It's, it's like, it's, and I want to say it's off-road, but it's like off-road. And there's this yeah. huge rock shelf. And it's oh, wow. tall, like about 20 or 30 feet. And there's all this room underneath the shelf to park Jeeps and things. So it's a huge area. Oh, and the saloon is just right here on the other side of the shelf. So they have like this built-in... Um, what do you call it? Uh, it's not like a parking lot. A cave. It, it, it is. It is. But I mean, okay. it's like a covered area where they can, wow. people can go and sit and do things. Where it, is this? What, where, what state are we in? I, I, I always have to look it up, but I think it's Alabama. Oh, okay. So not too far. Yeah. Ish. Yeah, 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 that's what I say. Well, <laughs> everything's <laughs> relative uh, to how far uh, Moab is for me now. That's, that's, uh, the longest, that's, that's the longest distance I've ever driven in my life. Um, except, really? yeah, except whenever I got my car, when I was 16, I put 2000 miles on that in the first two weeks. Uh, but, oh. it, but it you wasn't, yeah, but it wasn't driving, you know, one way it was just driving around. <laughs> All right. And we're going to get into the must have stuff for your Jeep segment. This is where Tony said he was going to let go a little bit, release the vice grip that he has on me. I'm not talking. We're gonna talk <laughs> Oh, you just did. <laughs> so um, here at High Lift, we do, um, we were able to provide such great products for everybody, not only in store, but online. Um, so we are a shop that does things in stages. We like to call it the, the build stage and we do it in threes. So stage one is, you know, when you first get your Jeep, you roll off a lot and you start realizing, oh my gosh, I need things. Um, Tony, what was one of the first things you bought when you got your Gladiator, when you rolled it off a lot? I believe, and especially after damaging the uh, the rockers and stuff on my uh, yeah. my XJ, rocker protection, rock sliders, rocker. no rocker. steps, rocker. damn it. So, oh come on. <laughs> well, steps are more like stage two. That could be a stage one. That's where your hall pass is stage two in our in our book. But um, the so stage one, um, you know, for me when I rolled off a lot, I knew I needed a grab handle because I couldn't really get in. To the short, Jeep. Uh, short people so problems. grab handles are great. They are short people problems. Uh, so grab handles are great. Bartac makes um, some epic gear. And there might be an incentive if you go to our website, highliftoffroad.com, and search under Bartac at the very top search bar um, to look at some of their products right now on our website. But they, you know, they really do, they are the most well made from seat covers to grab handles. Um, and even they make a padding that goes on the center console. So when you have your arm and you're resting, it feels all nice and cushy. So, um, I really enjoy the Bartac, uh, like that family of products. So for stage one, um, in stage two, we get into more like lift wheels and tires, which I know that's what, oh, that's God. the sexy stuff yes. I think to a lot of people, right? Absolutely. Makes a huge uh, change in the way the, the vehicle looks. 
It does. And stage two is really important because we want to make sure that driver, that driver ability is still there. Um, a lot of people focus on the off road piece when it comes to that, but it's really about being on the highway and going straight down the road. Um, so, you know, we, there's all these different lift. We, I love rock crawler, um, but JKS is fantastic as well. Um, so it's all about where you want to go. So that's why we talk about, you know, you have the dream, we build it, but we'll also maintain it at the same time. But we help you bring that dream to life because there's so many different products out there. But Rock Crawler is fantastic, JKS as well, um, and then wheels and tires. We could go on for days about that, Tony. Uh, Tony, what, what, what tires are you running? I'm running the Nexon Rodian uh, MTX uh, 35s, uh, th- 35, 12 and a half by 17s. Yep, I'm on 35s the same. Uh, mine are the Ridge Grappler, the Nino Ridge Grappler, which is their all-terrain. Um, and I love it. It, It's gotten me through so many things. Um, I am in the process of an upgrade right now, but, um, it's done very well for the past four to five years. Um, and has seen a lot of action. So very happy about that. Um, with some Rhino wheels to go with it. KMC bead locks. Those are also a fantastic one. Um, so you, you can find all these on our website as well. And then stage three, you know, it really gets down to doing more like bumpers, uh, going underneath working on the armor as well. Um, you know, Nemesis is fantastic, but Motobuilt, they do a great job. As we know, look at Tony, he turtled <laughs> and here we are. Uh, and he drove it home successfully. <laughs> but all these products you can find on our website. Um, and if you do have questions, you know how to find us uh, through the website or just give me a call. The number's on there. I would love to talk to you. So that, uh, that website is high lift off road, no dashes, no spaces, none of that high lift mm-hmm. off And that spell it out and spell out high H I G H. Kind of like your cats are right now. Highliftoffroad.com. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you thought it was a good idea to, to, to give uh, catnip to your cats before the recording. I did. It was a new toy. And this is what I was like, why would I do that five minutes before filming? Good job, Matt. <laughs> yeah. And, and if you missed it, if you're not watching uh, watching this on YouTube, which you should, uh, you're, you can go, go look, watch this on YouTube. You'll see where the cat gets up and gets right in her face. It's like looking at her like... <laughs> How much longer are you going to be? I need more catnip. <laughs> now they're just sitting in a chair looking at me. So that's why I kind of keep looking away because I was like, oh, okay. What are you guys plotting to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's always a little sad when we hit the end of the trail, but there's always another trail ride just down the road. Jeep Talk Show has four episodes a week. Oh, no, scratch that. Five episodes a week, Monday through Friday. Subscribe and never miss an episode. Hey, speaking of subscribing, uh, consider keeping the Jeep Talk Show on the air by subscribing to the show via Patreon. We talked about that. I think we talked about that this episode. We did, yeah. (laughs) The place to go for all the information on how to subscribe and how to contact us is at jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. Uh, I almost started calling. I almost did the same mistake I make with the Nicole. Natalie, thank you very much for being with us here today, and uh, hopefully we're going to see you back here on the show uh, several times. We're certainly going to see you on the Chick Chat episodes. Absolutely. I love it. Can't wait. We have lots to talk about, guys. Oh, yeah. Have a great night. Broadcasting since 2010. Damn it. I don't remember. Which button is it? All right, I'm going to pick the button I think it is and then choose the opposite one. Let's see what happens. From around the world. Damn it. <laughs> or from your city. We know it's and not that. sometimes just down the street. Howdy, neighbor. It's the Jeep Talk Show interview. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cool intro, though. All right. It is a great intro. Howdy, neighbor. <laughs> Yeah, Josh does some good stuff. All right, we're going to go back to this scene. And now I'm, I am now forget which one I pressed. Oh, my God. You're my friend. You're my new friend. 